Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Thriving Minds Podcast with your host, Walter Parada, where we strive to provide you with empowering talks so you can live to thrive. I hope you find yourself in the right frame of mind, focusing on all the things within your control. All right, so today's episode, we're going to be talking about inspiration and motivation, combining the two to work for you. We're all inspired or motivated by different things that fuels us to do what we do. It's a tremendous force that pushes us or pulls us to act. The goals that we pursue, the ambition that we have, gives greater power to do great things. Without it, we would do nothing. When you know exactly what inspires and motivates you, it gives you a greater advantage in how you pursue things in general. It gives you a much greater purpose that reminds you of why you take action, even in those times where you're not in the mood to do so. But there's a difference between inspiration and motivation. And oftentimes, these two words are used interchangeably. Knowing what separates the two gives you a greater understanding of how to use each one to bring out your best. Maybe you've given it some thought to what each one means to you, or maybe you haven't. But either way, it's going to help you identify specific things that will be key in and how much more energy you have and effort that you give. This helps to bring much greater clarity that allows you to move with greater conviction and confidence. So inspiration comes from within that compels you to do something that aligns with your values. You know, the conceptual idea. It's the spark that creates the desire you have where you're in that state of being and pursuing something that is meaningful. It's your why for whatever you choose to do and can be a catalyst for change to step beyond what you know, beyond what is comfortable, to explore new experiences. Inspiration is rooted in deep emotion and these grand ideas, which can be difficult to maintain over time as the moments when you're feeling down, the level of inspiration will taper off. It's directly correlated to your emotional state. At the very core, It's fueled by creativity and innovation to see things beyond what is around you and letting your vision, your imagination lead the way. It's knowing what general direction to take, but not quite sure how things are going to unfold. Think of all the intangible things like enthusiasm and passion. Inspiration allows for that to materialize that has a powerful ripple effect into many aspects of our lives. It can transcend us into a new exciting part of our lives or help us overcome adversity. Even though inspiration can be elusive, it can leave a long-lasting impact on us that shapes our perspective and drives us towards bettering ourselves. We can be inspired by somebody's incredible resiliency to handle adversity, setbacks and failures, you know, just continuing to forge ahead being able to triumph. Or it could be seeing someone's empathy for how they treat those going through very difficult situations and being there for them. You know, people like doctors and nurses and caretakers, people in the emergency field are great examples of this. It's that hero-like persona that can move us to want to be like them or make an impact similar to what they do. Motivation largely comes from an external source that gets us to move, but also can come internally. It's the goals that we're working towards, the tangible things that satisfy our needs. Just think of things like food, water, shelter, a place to be safe, you know, having friends, money, security. We're motivated to go after and achieve these things because in some cases, it could be the difference in surviving or not. But then from there, it progresses into other things that we're motivated by, such as rewards or accolades, you know, reaching a certain height in the field that you're in. When you know exactly what it is you're motivated by, those goals that you set, you can focus your effort channeling all that energy towards the goal. This is a catalyst that can propel you forward, helping you overcome challenges, enduring hardships, that's going to help you Maintain your commitment to what it is you're trying to achieve. 
this gives you that extra force to push beyond your limits to achieve something truly great. Motivation is your what. And when you know what it is that you're consistently working towards, it becomes a lot clearer. You know, the things that need to get done so you can get there. This then maps out a plan for how exactly you're going to do it. It specifically drives you to act a certain way. Motivation can also be things like wanting to do well for the people that we care for. So our families are a big reason why we want to do well, you know, so we can make them proud of us. Whether they're your parents, your siblings, if you have kids, you're motivated to conduct yourself, to behave, to accomplish certain things, to win them over or maintain their approval. This is part of that social motivation. And it also can be amongst your peers too, wanting to be accepted by them. So you're going to act a certain way or do certain things to fit in or gain their approval. You know, think of the work setting. You could be motivated to do an excellent job so you can win over your peers' approval, your supervisor's approval, and this might help you land a coveted promotion. You know, it's human nature to be competitive because that's what helps us continue to survive. So obviously, when we're playing sports, we're motivated to win. We're motivated to do the best we can because it gives us a greater probability of continuing to survive. And this can ascend into other things. So wanting to win more, wanting to, wanting to make it to the next level from playing high school sports to playing collegiate sports to then professional. Or from competing in a high school science fair to then going on to doing well in academics at the collegiate level and then going on to doing well in the professional setting. We're all motivated by so many different things that helps us survive that helps us progress to higher levels. And by having a clear goal or goals that you're motivated to achieve, you become more focused that helps you accomplish more. Combining this with your inspiration, they work in unison that builds on each other. So the inspiration serves as your guide in what direction you take your journey in life, led by what is important to you. You know, those intangible things. And motivation are the metrics that signal the amount of progress that you made in the direction that you're taking. It's clearly identifying what needs to be done and how to do it so you can continuously take action. Because we understand that inspiration can be elusive at times, because it's deeply rooted in emotion, those times when you're not feeling too well, where you're feeling down, you still know what it is in general that you're striving for, but don't really feel like doing it. Knowing what it is exactly you're motivated by is going to help you in these times where it pushes you to take action even when you don't want to. So you could be inspired to do the best you can for your family, but in doing so, how you make your living, there's going to be times where you feel like, I don't want to go to work. I just want to sleep in. I want to be lazy. I don't want to deal with all the headaches at work. But knowing what you're motivated by, such as, Making a living to provide your family a safe place to live, to be able to feed them, to take care of their health, is going to refocus your effort from what you want to do to what you have to do to accomplish it for them. That's where you're thinking, it's not just about me. It's about the people that I care for, the people that I love. I may not want to do it, but I need to do it for them. While inspiration can still work without motivation, it's going to result in a lot of time wasted because you're most likely to do as you feel. Without having that motivation of the goals that you're striving for, in a case like this, you could be thinking that I'm, in general, doing my best and having this downtime is okay without realizing that you're stuck in place. You know, there's no milestone to indicate if you're heading in the right direction and can eventually feel like very little has been done. It also works vice versa, where you know what you're motivated by, but not what you're inspired by. You can achieve many great things such as rewards and accolades, accumulating money, material things, and still feel 
unfulfilled because of not being aware of working towards what you value. It can feel empty even amongst all of what you have accomplished. In this case, it's having the externals, but not the internals. Some things to remember to differentiate inspiration from motivation is inspiration tends to be long-lasting as it can have an enduring impact, whereas motivation is short-term, filling a need so you can take action. Inspiration is spontaneous, whereas motivation is well-thought-out goals and a plan to achieve it. Inspiration is centered around well-being And motivation is competitiveness. Inspiration is feeling versus motivation is drive. This helps to distinguish the two so you know what state you're in. Feeling lost about the direction that you need to take or meaning in what you're doing, then inspiration can aid with that. Not knowing what to do, the action that needs to be taken, then motivation can assist with this. It can be very difficult to know what the next step is if you're not aware of the state that you're in. Trying to remedy inspiration by outlining goals or actions that need to be taken might seem like it can get you on the right track, but but there's still going to be this non-feeling of it's not satisfying, even if you accomplish what you set out for. If this happens to be the case, this is an ideal time to really Let yourself be to unwind, to find things that bring you meaning and purpose. You know, that reason for wanting to get up out of bed, ready to take on what's right in front of you or whatever you're looking out for. Because inspiration is spontaneous and can be elusive, you got to pay attention to the little things that are truly important because that's where you're going to find your inspiration. There's no timetable of I need to get inspired by this time, by this day. I need to find my inspiration quickly. It's mainly about a free-flowing state. And when you come across it, that right thing, you'll know it because you're in tune and you listen to yourself. It's mainly about a free-flowing state. And when you come across that right thing, you'll know it when you're in tune and listen to yourself. And the same goes for motivation. Trying to find purpose in your action can get you going, but going where? Something to keep you busy, but is it guiding you to where you need to go? You can have inspiration, but not motivation. And this can happen because of being lost in what is meaningful. It can be very invigorating to be in that state of doing something bigger than yourself that kind of wants to keep you there. When this does happen... Recognize that and figure out what needs to be done to fulfill that purpose. And that's when you can start to identify the metrics that need to be hit, which are the goals, and you can come up with an action plan to get you there. And by being aware of this, it's going to make you more efficient with your time, where it really does feel a lot more meaningful and accomplished at the same time. It is very much possible to be filled with purpose, but not accomplished which tend to be the dreamers, and full of accomplishment with no purpose, which tend to be the doers. When you can combine the two to work in unison, they just feed off of each other, and it makes you a visionary, where you're thinking about and planning the future with all your imagination leading the way, and acquiring, applying useful information to bring your ideas, your concepts to life. And just think about some of the grand ideas that you have. Those dreams that might seem so far out of reach, yet you believe that it can be done. Sometimes it could be the lack of belief in yourself. But when you start to work towards it and setbacks occur or roadblocks are in the way, that inspiration that you have is what's going to allow you to rebound from it and keep working towards your purpose. And the motivational piece is all the things that need to get done that's going to help you get you there. This is what really drives home the point that it is real, that it can be done and it's becoming. So as this is happening, because we know that inspiration can be fleeting at times, the thoughts will occur of, why am I even doing this? This is crazy. This is stupid. 
what am I thinking even going down this road of following my imagination, putting up with a high amount of uncertainty, headache, with very little reward or almost no reward. But all that work that was done, you can look on what was accomplished to remind yourself, your vision is coming to life. It might not happen in a straight line upward, but it's progressing. And when you can look back on everything that was done up until that point, it can spark things for the better to help you push forward, knowing that you got to make it happen. As you're starting out identifying what inspires you and then figuring out what motivates you, it can be difficult in the beginning because while you're taking action, working towards your guiding light, you're starting to lay the foundation, but the results are not yet seen or evident. Over time, that fire, that energy, the passion could start to wane if what you expected is not yet coming to fruition. So it's going to be important to find ways to stay motivated to consistently work towards your goals. Obviously, some simple things that are really helpful are listening to music, talking to uplifting and empowering people, or listening to podcasts with the right message to get you going. Watching movies that move you to bounce back from your tough times. All this is going to help internalize and better develop your thoughts, your self-talk, how you speak to others that can lead you to taking the right action. This builds your resilience that strengthens your mindset to do what is hard and avoid taking the path of least resistance. Another vital part to this is getting away or at least limiting negativity because all that's going to do is bring down your self-belief and less wanting to pursue what you're inspired and motivated by or at least doubting yourself. So while you want to be around those uplifting and empowering people, it's important to get away from those that are negative because they negate the right message from the right people. Getting these things squared away in the beginning It's going to help you get traction so you can build momentum and just continue down that same path. From there, it's going to be really important to set attainable goals. You know, those metrics that not so much you can easily attain, but something that forces you to work for it and you know you can achieve it. If you look at statistics around goals, 13% of people set goals yet don't achieve them while 3% of people who set goals do go on to achieve them. The difference between the two generally is that those 3% of people that have their goals break them down into scheduled actions to make them more committed to them. And because of this, they're 76% more likely to achieve what they set out for. So you can still have those big ambitious goals, but just further break them down into smaller pieces where they're a lot more manageable and digestible. This helps you feel less overwhelmed and more feeling that you can do it. Another helpful thing in making sure that you're on track to reaching what you set out for is presenting weekly progress reports to a supportive audience. And this increases your success to achieve your goal by 40%. This makes you more motivated to take the proper action in a timely manner Because now you become more accountable. Because you actually have to answer to somebody that thinks you can do it. As we know, motivation will wane at times. So recognize when that does happen. And see what the cause of it is. It could be as simple as the goal as of right now is just so far out of reach that it makes it feel like enough progress is not being made. And you can just focus on setting out to reach very attainable milestones just to get you started. So if you're motivated to earn half a million dollars a year, break that down into a lot of little goals to work your way up to that ultimate goal. You could start off by aiming to earn $50 or $100. And if you find out that that's way too easy, that you've attained it really quickly, then you can increase it to say $250, $500, $1,000. This builds confidence that Man, I can really push myself to earn a lot more where now it's maybe a few thousand dollars or $20,000 
or maybe you're earning $50,000, $60,000, $100,000 a year. It's going to be important to remember to have some sort of an action plan to go along with it that outlines a few steps to keep you on track. By gradually building up into the level of difficulty in what you do, the action that you take develops and strengthens your work ethic that's going to magnify your abilities, where you transcend it into another atmosphere of being invigorated, driven by all the possibilities. You know there's that common term constantly being thrown out there of you got to work hard, you got to outwork your competition. But what gets lost in all of this is developing that work ethic. Show me how exactly. It's simply not enough to work long hours to exert or exhaust yourself and think that's going to produce tremendous results. You got to know how exactly to work. And that starts with what inspires you and what motivates you. Combining these two is what's going to allow your work ethic to really drive results. And working hard is a little bit different for everybody. It's not a set amount of hours or a set amount of tasks that need to get done on a daily basis or on a weekly basis. It's really finding an effective way in which you operate. So really, it should be about effectively working where it's combining working smart with working hard. And this means knowing where you're going and how you're going to get there. If things are not progressing as you expected or the results are not coming about, that's a time to really evaluate to see what's been done, what else could be done better to get you where you need to be. Because if it's just about working hard, then that would mean working harder would get you the results that you're after. But sometimes the approach or the way that you're doing things is just not working. And this is where working smart helps you to see this, to recognize what has been done, has not yet worked, and something needs to change. So take the time to figure out what approach is going to work for you. Simply because the next person works at their craft for 75 hours a week doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Maybe you need to put in 85 hours a week, or it could be 50 hours a week. It's all dependent on finding that right fit for you. And all this is going to start with knowing what it is exactly that inspires you, reminding yourself of it, surrounding yourself with the right people to help bring out your best. You got to be open to whatever comes your way, because as we know, inspiration is spontaneous. And if you're not aware of it, you'll miss out on the things that really compel you to change for the better. Let it happen naturally. Let it come to you, avoiding putting a timeline on it. From there it becomes a lot clearer the things that motivate you and that's going to help you get to your ultimate destination. Take the time to really think things through to identify those goals that you want to accomplish. With inspiration, it really becomes simple why you want what you want. Your motivation is all the action that you take that will be the difference from thinking and hoping that your ideas, your dreams will one day happen to actually forming, becoming, and materializing. Having the two working in unison is just going to facilitate living a fulfilling life where you know why you do what you do and how you're going to do it. Where purpose becomes a center of how you operate. And all this is made possible by just focusing on yourself where you better understand and know your values. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're interested in more topics like this, become a Thriving Minds member at www.thrivingminds.live. It's your personal development resource so you can build that right mindset so you can live to thrive. All right, until next time.